But that patrol, we started out in moonlight, and that was no problem. We knew the path through the minefield, and we got along fine, but then it clouded up, and then we started hitting German troops. And not an isolated patrol, but bodies of troops moving into position. Oh, geez. So we had to zigzag to get around them and stuff. And we finally got in the ice weller and realized we were in, if not Army headquarters, Corps headquarters. And they were tanks and artillery and everything was on the move. So we headed back and of course by this time we run out of our window. Oh jeez. So, but luckily most of us going to over and oh I'd have to get under a shelter half with a compass to get a bearing because you couldn't have any light. Right, yeah. And we finally get back to the minefield, and we know we weren't anywhere near the break. So Jonesy starts through, and and he hollered at us to haul, say, back up, get out of here, the same steps, because we we're right in the middle of it. That put me in the lead. So I went down a ways and thought I saw good spot, <coughs> and I told the guy behind me, let me try it, wait and see if I get through, and then I'll bring you through. So I went through, and I was just uh, turn around to tell them to come ahead when the world exploded. They hadn't waited, and somebody hit a tripwire, and the uh, seven of us total, and the other six were demolished. So you were the sing the sole survivor? As far as I know. Oh, boy. And, and I didn't think I was hit. But anyway, that brought out uh, troops that were stationed that happened to be C Company out of our regiment. And thanks to that track again, they were you know, they came out, password, and I gave them the password, and they said, oh, that's yesterday's, anybody could have that. <laughs> <coughs> and they were talking English, so I started telling them, hey, we're easy, come to, we lived on such and such a street, and Camp Carson, and who are you? And finally somebody said, and I said something about, we used to beat the heck out of you in track. And one of the guys said, is that Hammond? <laughs> and so then they got me to the regimental commander so I could give the report about what we found. And I remember telling him about all the troops and we thought they were going to jump off. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up in a hospital in Belgium. Wow. And I had shrapnel all up and down the back of my uh, right leg. And I turned my head, and I had little shreds in my, a uh, pretty good piece in my nose. Uh, metal worked out of me for two years after that. Wow. But it wasn't really as bad as it looked, but. Do you think up to that point you were just running off adrenaline? I mean, how? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I didn't even realize my boot was full of blood, blood and yeah. everything. I didn't even realize I was bleeding <sighs> at that time. So they were worried about that piece of metal in my nose, and they have to wait for a specialist. And, so I laid there for two weeks. He came in, he looked at it, 
said, anybody got a pair of tweezers? Reached up my nose, pulled it out, and said, next time you blew your nose, it would have come out. <laughs> he said, you're back on duty. Really? Yeah. Well, the, they wouldn't take out those little pieces. They'd do more damage. <coughs> and so they, when it's returned, <coughs> when I got back to the company, I knew about six guys, the captain and the five cooks. Because in the, that battle when we said the Germans were jumping off, we jumped off the same time that same morning. And our troops were, our position wasn't a thousand yards from where I'd been mm -hmm. when, before the patrol. But anyway, uh, the captain said, well, you're second squad leader now. You're sergeant, staff sergeant. So in four or five months, I'd gone to private uh, staff sergeant. But I said, well, where is the second squad? And he said, you're it. We expect replacements in a few days. And 